Have you ever been in a meeting and you're not sure if anyone's even paying attention? I have, and that's why I started using polls. Polls and Teams meetings are powered by Microsoft Forms. They're a great way to gather feedback, get people engaged, and check their understanding. But there are a couple things you need to know to make sure that they are set up correctly. So let's take a look at how we can add polls to meetings and webinars using Microsoft Teams. The first thing that we need to do is create a meeting or webinar. For this example, I'm going to create a standard meeting. The process is almost identical no matter which option you choose. At the end of the video, I will show the slight difference when adding polls to a webinar. Select the date and time for the meeting and go through the process to give it a title, add at least one attendee, and add a description. Before you can add the Polls app, the meeting invitation must be sent. Once that is done, go back to the invite on the calendar and double-click it to open it again. Go to the toolbar at the top of the screen and click on Apps towards the right side. Here you will see a list of apps that your company allows you to use. Select Polls. It may take a few moments for the Polls app to be added to the meeting. When it is done, it will show in the Apps section of the meeting invite just above the description field. At the time of creating this video, there is a small bug in the polls process, so I am quickly going to show you what it is and how to work around it. The natural workflow would be to click on the polls button. A dialog box will open and here you can create a new poll or add a suggested poll. Here's where the bug comes in. When you click Save as Draft at the bottom of the poll, it closes everything without saving. However, there is a workaround to use until such time as Microsoft fixes the bug. Instead of clicking Polls, go to the top right side of the screen and click Chat. This will take you out of the meeting invite and open the chat associated with it. At the top of the screen, there's a row of tabs, and at the end, you will see polls. When you click on that, notice that here are the same poll options we saw a moment ago. Now, I will select Quick Poll again, and then save as draft. This time, the poll saves as intended. Now, you can prepare all of your polls before the meeting begins so that it will be easier to manage them while the meeting is in progress. With that little caveat out of the way, let's look at how we can create some polls. To get started, click on New Poll at the top left side of the screen. There are a few options to choose from. Multiple choice is great for quick decisions. A quiz is like multiple choice, except you can mark one as a correct answer. This is great for knowledge checks, and I often use them as a check on learning during training webinars. Word cloud is a visual way to gather ideas or sentiment. Rating can be used to get a sense of how people feel, and ranking can be used to prioritize options. In this example, let's say we're trying to decide what app we would like to use to track tasks for an upcoming project. I can create a multiple choice question and let the meeting participants choose one option. If you use the toggle button at the bottom of the question, it would let people choose more than one. However, in this scenario, we want one answer per person. While creating a poll, you can add more than one question, and it can be from any of the available question types. For the second question, I want to get a sense of how the group feels about how easy or hard it is to use the Planner app. So I'm going to use a rating question. By default, the rating is set to one to five stars. But if you click the drop down next to star, there will be additional options. For this example, I think numbers would work best. Below, there are labels to add context to what one and five mean. In this case, I will say one is hard to use and five is easy to use. Now, I would like to draw your attention to the settings at the bottom of the dialog box. By default, a results box will be visible to everyone and they can see the overall answers, but the meeting participants won't know who made what choice. 
The next option lets you decide if co-presenters can edit the polls while they are in a draft status. This is useful when you have a co-organizer helping you with the meeting or if you are setting up meetings for someone else who will be presenting. The last setting option is to choose whether to gather names of the respondents or leave it anonymous. There's no wrong choice here, but I often leave this turned off, especially when I'm doing a check on learning. I don't want people to feel like they're going to be called out if they choose the wrong answer. And I've noticed more people are inclined to participate when they know the names are turned off. Now that we have selected our settings, it's time to save the poll. There are two choices. You can launch the poll or save it as a draft. Keep in mind, we are creating these polls before the meeting begins. If you choose launch, a chat notification will be sent and people can start answering right away. If you're trying to gather information before a meeting, then this would be appropriate. However, the most common use case is to use polls during a meeting. So I will select save as draft. The second poll is now saved and you can see that it is clearly marked as a draft. You can also see that the first poll says only you and the second one says shared. That is because we changed the settings on the second one to allow co-organizers and presenters to edit the draft. The first one, we use the default setting, so I'm the only one who could edit. At the bottom left side of the poll card, you will see the word launch. If you click the drop down next to it, you will see the options to edit or delete the poll. On the bottom right side, you will see an indication of how many questions are included in each poll. Now I would like to draw your attention to the options for creating polls at the top of the content pane. The second one is My Recent Polls, which lets you reuse polls from the past 90 days. It's important to know that this will only show polls that you have launched in a meeting. So for example, it only shows the how are you feeling poll and not the ones related to task management because I have not used the task management ones in a meeting yet. The My Recent Polls option does save time when you have standard questions across multiple meetings. Now that we have created a couple of polls, it's time to look at how to use them during a meeting. Now, if you're finding this content useful, please give the video a like. So I quickly joined the meeting. In the toolbar at the top right side of the screen, you will see the polls app. When you click on that, a pane will open up on the right side of the screen. Here, you will see everything we created a moment ago. Notice that you also have the option to create new polls while the meeting is in progress. I always suggest creating everything in advance because it makes it easier to manage the meeting. But I know there are times when an idea comes to you at the last minute. This way you can quickly set up your poll without needing to go back to the meeting invite. Now let's pretend that the other people have joined and I want to do an icebreaker. I'm going to launch the first poll to ask how everyone is feeling today. A chat notification will pop up unless the person turned chat notifications off in their settings. Notice that the status of the poll changed from a green draft to red live. Everyone should see the poll in the center of the screen. However, if someone cannot see it or they accidentally dismissed it before answering, they can click chat in the toolbar at the top of the screen to submit an answer. I'm going to answer by selecting I feel good today. As each person submits their choice, the response box will update. The poll will stay open and accept answers until it is closed. As a tip, I suggest closing the poll before you launch the next one so that the attendees know which one they are supposed to interact with at the appropriate time. Additionally, the last poll you launch, I would close that by the end of the meeting so that it doesn't stay open indefinitely. To close a poll, go back to the Polls app, click the drop down next to Back to Question, and choose Close Poll. Now, let's launch the task management poll. Because this one has multiple questions, you will have to at least look at all the questions before submitting the answers. I'm going to vote for planner on the multiple choice question, 
and then select the arrows at the bottom right of the poll card. Next, I will give my rating answer and then click Submit. As the meeting organizer or presenter, when you are ready, go back to the poll card and click Close. The status will update and the poll will no longer accept answers. However, if you realize that you need to gather more information, click the drop down next to response details and select reopen poll. Next, I want to draw your attention to the bottom of the polls pane so that we can look at the instant poll option. This lets you choose from a check or X, thumbs up or thumbs down, or heart or broken heart to quickly gather yes, no, or binary type feedback. In this example, I will choose thumbs up, thumbs down. This will put the icons on the screen for the participants to interact with. It's important to know that you cannot add a question or give it a name. Instead, you would ask this question verbally. The results will be captured, but the tricky part is that if you use multiple instant polls, it can be difficult to remember what the answers are associated with. What I tend to do if I have time in the meeting is to export the results to Excel right away and give the file a name that will help me remember what the question was. If you are recording the meeting, it's less of an issue because you can use the timestamp to go to the correct part of the video to match the question with the results. Now that we've used a few polls in meetings, let's talk about looking at the results. There are two options. The first is exporting the results like we just discussed, and the second is to go to the Forms app. When you create a poll, a personal form is created. It is important to know that personal forms are tied to your OneDrive. If you need to keep this data long term and or share it with others, it's a good idea to save the exported results to a shared location such as SharePoint or Teams. From the My Forms section, select the poll that you want to view. Notice it says in the yellow banner at the top that this form is read only and cannot be edited. Any edits must happen in the polls app. What we want to look at here is the view responses option on the top right side of the screen. Here you can see the response overview, check individual results, or export the results to Excel. The Excel file is the same one you would get by exporting the question from the meeting. The main reason that people like to come to Forms is to see the charts that can only be found in the Forms app. Now let's switch our focus for a moment. And as promised, we're going to look at the slight difference when adding polls to webinars. I've navigated back to the Teams calendar. Next to New Event on the top right side of the screen, choose the drop down and then select Webinars. Before you can add the poll app, you must enter the required information on the Details tab and save it. Then you must publish the site. If you recall, when creating a standard meeting, the invitation had to be sent first. With a webinar, the invitation is equivalent to publishing the webinar and allowing people to sign up. You don't have to finish setting up the presenter bios, themes, or configuring registration to publish. While it may be a good idea to have these tasks completed, it is not technically required. Navigate back to the meeting invite on the Teams calendar and then double click the webinar. From the toolbar at the top, select Apps and then Add Polls. From here, everything is the same as we already discussed. So there you go, that's our once over the world about polls and Teams meetings. To get an overview of what some of the other M365 apps can do, click the link in the description to request a copy of my free Microsoft 365 cheat sheet. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.